guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Reading Bear, and I hope you are ready for some more stories. And today, we'll take a look at some new entitled people content. If you enjoyed my content, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and post some bear emojis in the comment. And now, let's dive right into the stories. The first story is titled Neighbors invited people to trespass and park on my private property. Everyone gets towed. I really wish that the stupidity and overall jerk behavior of people could just go away to the point that stories like this wouldn't even be necessary. Unfortunately for me though I am going to just add to the list of neighbors that need to learn how to behave because they clearly didn't learn when they were 5 years old like the rest of us. I don't really have a lot to say about my neighbor outside of this story though since this basically happened right after I moved into the house. I guess asshole neighbor isn't something that the real estate agent likes to tell you about in order to make the sale. So that's the situation that I found myself in. Just moving into a new house, not even having unpacked half of my things, still needing to get some stuff from my old house two hours away, and my neighbor doesn't know anything about common courtesy. Obviously, you want to know what he is doing that is so bad I am this angry, and in short, I keep finding people's cars on my property. When I say that the air on my property, I don't even mean that they are in my driveway because sometimes they park next to each other where two cars end up half on my driveway and half on the grass. My new wife is not happy about this and when I'm not home actually says she is scared to be looking out the window and seeing all of these strangers parking and even hanging out on our property. I was back in our old place for two days packing everything else up so when I got there, I decided that I was going to try to handle the situation myself. My wife had apparently tried talking to the neighbor while I was gone, to basically get nowhere with him. I was going to start like anybody naturally would, assessing the situation at hand. I found out that neighbor liked to throw a lot of parties and the people were parking not only in his own driveway but, the street, legal and fine, across the street in the driveway of an empty house, not sure if legal but to me still seems like a dick move, and of course my house, a big no-no. I figured that I might as well start somewhere and thought to maybe talk to the people parking there and explaining that this was my property and they had to park somewhere else. When I tried this though they started speaking back to me in a language that I honestly never heard of, it could have been anything to me. You might think well okay it's not their fault that they don't understand what I am telling them. When I went to neighbor's backyard to find him though I find the same exact people speaking English to each other so I know that they were just pretending in hopes that I would give up and let them park there. I found neighbor and I basically got as far as my wife did with him constantly telling me not to worry about it and there was plenty of room for everyone. He either didn't care that it was technically trespassing or thought he was being funny. Either way I wasn't laughing and wanted to do something about this because I did not want to have to move right away again because of one bad neighbor. It wasn't only the cars though that was the problem with his parties. Now I will admit that after a certain time in the night they did move indoors and were quiet enough that we couldn't hear them. I mostly slept right through them even getting back into their cars and driving away. Still though I was waking up every day and walking to my car, which was safely inside the garage out of fear, to see garbage all over the place. Cigarette butts, beer cans, food wrappers, even dog shit. I didn't move out of a big city just to now be surrounded by the same garbage right in front of my home. It didn't help that my wife was miserable and looking out the window all she saw was either a mess or a bunch of people on our property. I knew that talking to them wasn't going to cut it and that I needed to come up with a plan. Since this guy clearly didn't want to play nice, I decided that I wasn't going to either. Since I was new to the area though I had to do some research regarding the things that this guy was doing because I didn't want to make a claim about something that was allowed and then have everything else be ignored. What I found though was better than I could have hoped for. Like basically everywhere else it was illegal to park on someone else's property. The throwing of the trash onto my property though was apparently taken very seriously here and could result in fines up to $500. Also, as a little bonus not picking up after your dog apparently counted as a completely separate fine to avoid people not picking up after their dogs. I was going to get this guy good and for anyone thinking that it was a little harsh please keep in mind that between that first day and this plan I had tried to talk to him at least a dozen times to no avail. There was no getting through to him. I stayed up one night until his party was moved inside and then called to have all four cars that were parked on my property that night removed. I know that they were all too drunk and still partying to even notice what was happening. In addition to that I had already sent in video proof of the littering and not cleaning up after their dog. 
When they woke up though to see their cars gone, they were so confused and caught me as I was getting to my car to go to work. Magically these guys knew how to speak perfect English to me now and I told them that I warned neighbor I wasn't going to allow anyone to park on my property and that I had them towed. They were angry and told on me to neighbor who was not happy about the whole thing. I decided to be about as helpful as he was and tell him not to worry about it just like he told me. He had no idea how to respond to that and ended up sulking back towards his house. The next few days multiple people were invited by him to park onto our property, but they got the same consequence of getting towed. I did warn the ones I saw parking there and while some moved the others didn't and found out my threat was real. Eventually though things started to change when I guess the town finally sent him the fines and he realized that he wasn't going to get away with everything. While he still had parties, which again were never an issue, they were now much more subdued. Sometimes there wouldn't even be one and I would see him driving off going to someone else's house for one. The trash problem stopped and well and my wife is much calmer now that strangers aren't randomly appearing on our property. I still feel a little weird about leaving my car out so that is going to stay nice and safe in the garage for now. At least I can get to it without walking through all that trash now. The next story is titled. Ex-friend expected free rent. This subreddit made me remember my ultimate story on this subject as far as baffling behavior. My lifelong friend wanted to live in my condo that I wasn't actively using because I had relocated to another city, apartment, before I was going to then rent out the condo. I told him that he could use it for a small amount of time until he found his own place, maybe even six months, just not for too long. I paid $280 monthly HOA dues, it had a pool, security, etc., and property taxes ran me about $200 monthly, plus the electric bill was then assessed by unit each month. I told him he could stay at the condo for $550 per month, just my cost to keep it going, and this was in Southern California. He agreed to pay didn't seem to grumble or anything, and I honestly thought I was doing something really nice for my longest time friend. An 820 square foot condo with a pool for $550 per month in California, you're just not going to find that. I wasn't making a dime off him, I just didn't want to lose money and subsidize his lifestyle out of my pocket. Fast forward a few months, my other friends all inform me that he's been texting them about what a bastard I am that I dare charge him rent to stay there, like how could a friend charge money for that? My friends didn't know what the deal was, so they asked me, and I told them I'm not charging him any rent I'm literally just asking that he pay the costs of the unit and nothing more. For reference, when he left eventually, I rented it for several years at $1,300 per month so he was not even paying half of market rent. I owned the condo free and clear, so I had lower costs with no mortgage, thus allowing me to charge him less and break even. Finally, when we eventually went to move my stuff out of there, and yes it was fully furnished too with a nice TV, kitchen items, everything you could need, he had broken about one quarter of my dishes, he left a used condom hanging on a trash can, and while my 105 pound girlfriend and I packed my stuff, he sat on the couch not offering to help at all even once in three days. He laughed about the condom, he took a giant dump in the bathroom and clogged the toilet requiring a plumber to fix, and then when we went to dinner, he forgot his wallet and never paid me back. He even woke us up early after we were up late packing by talking on the phone with online friends, he met on various chat forums. We didn't remain friends long after that, needless to say. I couldn't believe just how oblivious that is to get such a good deal, then badmouth the person for doing you a favor, and trash their place. I spent a bunch more on housekeeping and my real estate agent who was renting it out after he left said the housekeeping service had never seen a place so filthy. We noticed that too besides the condom, there was dirt and just filth everywhere. He wiped it out. The last story is titled. I won over $5,000 for in court after a car accident that I caused. Okay, so just a little bit of info before I get into the story. Also, sorry this might get a little long, but I hope it's worth it. I, 22 male, work construction and run a few crews and I'm a foreman because I've been working in this field since I started working summers when I was 14 that's legal in my state, with this being said I have a lot of experience and get paid really well. For my job I need a truck that can pull a lot of trailers and also get into a lot of sketchy job sites, especially in the winter, so I drive a new lifted pickup F350. Anyways, let's get into it. So about 4 months ago now I got off work one day and just really didn't feel like making dinner, so I decided to go get myself the trusty Big Mac at McDonald's. Well after I got my order, 
I was going to pull out into the parking lot to drive home and I was looking hard over to my left to see how busy the road was before I got over there. I wasn't paying great attention to what was happening in front of me and as I was creeping forward someone who was in front of me was stopped and not paying attention either, I ended up barely hitting his mirror and scraping his door with my front end. I immediately reversed and hopped out. I made sure the guy was okay and apologized, knowing it was my fault and I asked him if he wanted to call the cops. Let's call him Brent. Brent says, nah bro we are all good. If you just get me your insurance info, I think we can get this taken care of. I was fine with that as there was no damage done to my truck and it's not required to call the cops for an accident if it occurs in a private parking lot, this is relevant later. We exchange info and he seems pretty cool, so I tell him to go get the damage bid and he'll just pay in cash, so my insurance rates don't go up as long as he's okay with it. He says that's fine, and we both just leave, and I feel like a moron, but all in all Brent seems like a cool dude and I just hope we can get it sorted out smoothly. About a month passes by and I haven't heard anything from Brent or the shop I told him to go to. Honestly, I wasn't too stressed about this because if he decided to not get it done that's on him. Well, he calls me up one day at about noon saying he can't remember my name and he wanted to tell the guys at the shop who sent him there because it seemed like we knew each other. I told him my name and the guys at the shop gave him a deal, pretty sure they say this to everyone. He sends me the bid for damages, and it comes out to $2,403. This was more than I imagined but I said to get it done and it'd take care of the bill afterward and that was that. He hung up said it was cool and I went on with my day as usual. Another month goes by, and I don't hear anything until Brent calls me up while I'm at work again and says, Hey bro, I talked to the shop and they said they can't get me in for another two weeks or so, and they may end up charging me more if they find more damage. I say, okay sounds good just let me know man, I hope it goes smooth for you and I'm sorry for the inconvenience. He seems to take it good and I'm really trying to just be a good person. He responds with, well after talking to my wife I'm okay if you just wanted to write a check for $2,500 and we can call it even. This seemed odd to me because why the hell wouldn't someone want their vehicle repairs all paid for? I say okay man let's set a time and place to meet and it'll get you paid. He liked the idea and ended the call by telling me he would let me know. Yet another month passes by, and I hear nothing again. At this point I'm getting fed up and just want this situation to stop being over my head. He hits me up at 11 pm, one night and asks if we can meet in town, I found this kind of disrespectful because I was nearly asleep and had to be at work at 5 am the next day. Either way I said that was fine and took my $2,500 cash and wrote up a quick contract saying this payment would be accepted as payment in full for the damages and by accepting it, it would release me from any and all liability. This was a pretty fair contract I believe as it was the deal we had already made over the phone, just in writing. I get to the place we suggested as a meetup spot, I give him the cash and he signs the contract without hardly even reading it and he didn't want the copy. This was a red flag to me, but I just assumed he really didn't care about it all that much, so I just send him the photo of the contract and go back home for some beauty sleep. As you can guess by now, another month goes by with me just living life carefree and not a worry in the world about this stupid car accident. Well, I go to check my mail and I have a notice from this guy's lawyer that he is suing me for not paying after wrecking his car. This pissed me off, but I also knew I had plenty of text messages and a contract on my side. I immediately call Brent and he blocks my number. Luckily enough my girlfriend works for a lawyer, so I get him updated and he says he'd love to help. He lets me know I saved my ass by writing that contract as any contract worth over $500 is to be held up in any level court in my state. I immediately get to work on my revenge. I remember on the side of this guy's car he had a business logo, and I took pictures of the damage, so I hop online and get to the BBB to look up who owns this company, thinking that surely, he couldn't own the business because he is such an idiot. I was wrong. This guy owns the company, and I can see that he has about 121 star reviews all in dispute because of his shady business practices telling people it will cost one thing and then charging them four times what he said it would. Sound familiar? Remember when he said the shop may charge more than the original $2,403? That's right he was suing me for $10,000. Four times what the shop told him it would cost. Unbelievable, he was trying his same sneaky shit on me. My lawyer takes not of this, and we show up to court ready for war. This guy is sleazy. As we get there and all set up, he says, you ready to give me more of daddy's money? With a smirk. 
I guess just cause I'm young and drive a nice truck and could afford $2,500. His lawyer gets up and starts trying to say BS from me hitting and running and Brent barely got a picture of my license plate. So I tried bullying him into taking a deal for only $2,500 when the damage was clearly more than that. There were obvious holes in his story, and he really didn't have much to say. Just imagine the smile on my face as my lawyer lays out the printouts of our text messages and the physical copy of the contract which was signed by Brent. His lawyer was ghostly white and looked sick. After laying out all of the evidence my lawyer pulled out a little hidden gem. The printouts of all the complaints we found on the BBB and how he was doing the same thing to me. That was the final nail in the coffin as the judge said he had seen enough. He asked Brent for any final statements and Brent said, I don't even have the $2,500 anymore, can I just get that then and we will be, okay? Literally admitting to the judge that he had received my money and his story was just a load of horse shit. I thought his lawyer was gonna strangle him. It was beautiful. The judge ended up ruling in my favor and demanded him to pay my legal fees as well as damages and lost wages because I had to miss work to be in court. The absolute sweetest part was that this particular day my crew was on a very high wage job and I was technically the one getting paid before I paid them out as subcontractors. This means I was to be paid $475 per hour and this whole ordeal took about 5 hours. He ended up having to pay me almost $5,000. I don't think I've ever been so happy in my life. Sort it was so long I just really felt the need to share, thank you to anyone who made it this far. Thanks for listening.